Welcome my friends to my top five list of the best regiments of renown in Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at those units that are really just game changers for a faction. So they might be addressing a blaring weakness a faction has, or they might just be really strong. So on that note, guys, let us begin with the number five pick here on the list, which is going to be the Dragonback Slayers. So these are the Slayer Regiments of Renown. These guys are an absolute powerhouse of units. So one of the biggest issues the dwarves have in general is dealing with mobility. So that can be cav units, that can be single entity monsters, uh, flying dragons diving on you, because oftentimes they can dive in, they can pull out, and the dwarves, they do have the new Rune of Wrath and Ruin, which is very helpful. Of course, it lowers their speed by, I believe, 75%, 72% somewhere in that ballpark, but having slowing effects or snaring effects is by far one of the most useful things in the game for the dwarves. We saw this a ways back, I believe it was almost, yeah, it must have been like a year by now, but the dwarves used to have the Tormentor sword on their thanes, and that was like just a game changer. I mean, the dwarves just went from being a relatively, you know, tougher faction to play to just being a powerhouse, like locking things in place, shooting them down with the guns, and it really addressed the weakness of the dwarves. And the Dragon Black Slayers, you know, they've been the old faithful. They've been there forever, and they have some really good tools here. So let's go ahead and take a look. So firstly, Dragon Dragonback Slayers just have better stats than regular Slayers across the board. 48, 41, 48, definitely not bad. Huge bonus for Slarge. Now, not the best AP values, but their bonus for Slarge and just their kind of general, uh, you know, good combat stats can make up for that against Constructs. Like, let's say they're fighting like a Camry and War Sphinx. Uh, they're going to be able to do some really good work. But more importantly, the really nice thing about Dragonback Slayers as they have the power of the Dragonback. So this gives them flame resistance, which is kind of just a fun little perk. Doesn't come into play too often, but it can matter uh, against like dragons and whatnot. But more importantly, it applies 22% weakness to fire against that unit. But the best thing is the speed debuff. So whenever Dragonback Slayers hit anything, it lowers their speed by 36%. So if you stack the power of the Dragonback with the Rune of Wrath and Ruin, you're going to be slowing them into another dimension, which is very, very good. So again, the Dragonback Slayer, I think, is you know, very deserving of the number five spot here in the list, perhaps even higher because it just addresses such a blaring huge weakness of the dwarves. The dwarves have trouble with speed and mobility and, uh, you know, large threats and the dragback slayers deal with the issue of speed. They can pin down heavy calves. So if a heavy calf comes in with like 66 70 speed, they get hit by the dragonback slayers. They're going to get slowed on the way out. They're going to be taking more casualties from the slayers who will be pursuing them and slowing them. They're going to be taking more gunfire. These guys are just an absolute Absolutely amazing unit. Dragonback Slayer is one of my favorite units. And also, they're really badass. I mean, Slayers are a really, really cool unit. So, Dragonback Slayer R. War is going to be our number five pick. And now we're going to be going over to the realm of Luther Harkin for the number four pick, which is going to be the Lamprey's Revenge. The Lamprey's Revenge are just such a tanky, durable unit. Those guys are just incredibly tough to take down. Now, the Rotting Prometheans in general are very, very tough. And let's go ahead and take a look at these specific stats here as I pull it up in my card. Yeah, good armor piercing values. They regenerate. 120 armor, 6,000 plus HP, good combat stats, 48 uh, melee attack, 59 melee defense, 77 weapon strength, uh, pretty good armor piercing shots from the back as well, and just such a roadblock. So if you're going to be defending a gun line, for example, these guys, if people are coming in with heavy cav or anything, Lamprey's Revenge can stop them, they can deal with them. If they're going to be taking a hail of gunfire, whether it be armor piercing gunfire or small gunfire, uh, they're going to be able to heal through it relatively effectively. And even if you have a big single entity come in, they have good combat stats. They can hold them in place and uh, really just muck things up. I think Lamprey's Revenge are just uh, a really, really good unit. Uh, the Regeneration. Regeneration is by far one of the most powerful stats in the game, especially on units that are already super tanky. Like there are units in the game that, you know, have regeneration characteristics that, you know, aren't inherently super tanky themselves. So it's not like as powerful, but... When you're fighting the Lamprey's Revenge, Rotting Promethean Gunnery Mob, ROR, you're having to work through 120 armor, 59 melee defense, and uh, yeah, these guys are just, it, it like, so every amount of health it heals is just so valuable because your opponent is going to have to scrap so much to, like, get past those uh, those stats. And let's go ahead and take a look, make sure I'm not missing anything else. But yeah, they have the extra powder, of course, as all Vampire Coast does. They are a little bit weak to fire, but most fire damage doesn't have, like, the best AP aside from dragons and things like that. And uh, yeah, they're just incredibly solid. Also, something else a lot of people don't know because it's not on the primary tooltip. So if you look at the primary tooltip, it says armor piercing, regeneration, defender, and aquatic. Maybe it's kind of inferred in the defender trait, but these guys actually have expert charge defense. So when bracing this unit, it gets charge bonus. So again, if people are coming in with heavy cav, whether even against like Dembergriff Knights, these guys can hang, uh, tank relatively well, even though it's something that should counter them. So the number four unit here in the list is going to be the Lamprey's Revenge Rotting Promethean. Promethean, Promethean, it's a bit of a tongue twister, Gunnery Mob. So now we're going to be going on to the number three pick, which is going to be in the realm of the Skaven. So these are a unit that I think, 
at a time when they first came out were probably the best regiments renowned in the game. Uh, in the game, I think it must have been number one. But this is a Natty Bubo sharpshooter. So these guys, when they first came out, were super oppressive. They had like insane range. They've been nerfed pretty heavily since then. As such, they are going to be earning the number three spot. But I still think they're like a staple unit. Like even if you're not bringing any other range tools, let's say you're going for like a melee build or a defensive Death Star, slapping these guys in the middle, they're pretty much good in every Skaven build. And that's also another one of the metrics I'm kind of uh, using today. Dragonback Slayers, good to be relatively useful in almost every matchup. The Lamprey's Revenge, probably good to be relatively useful in almost every matchup. Maybe not in like every single build, but in general, they're just a really good unit. And I think the Daddy Bubo Sharpshooters are in that ballpark. So firstly, these bad, bad boys have great armor piercing values. They have Shield Breaker, which is cool. Not the most useful ability in the world, but they're great against single entities, great at sniping lords, great at sniping enemy artillery pieces because they have snipe and stock. So these guys are going to be shooting from 275 range while hidden, which is so damn good. So enemy missile units, you can sneak up, uh, sneak up on, you know, really defensive artillery builds that the dwarves may bring. And it's really tough to deal with. Now, Snipe, like we've critiqued it in the past. It's not often as good on units that have like 175, you know, 160 range in that ballpark because they can be discovered easily. But these annoying little rats can sit back really far. That Snipe is very powerful. They hit like trucks and they just do a ton of work. So Natty Booba Sharpshooters, I think, are a unit that you, you can see in almost every matchup. Like, just look at it this way. What's a matchup in which they would be like just absolutely terrible or they just wouldn't fit at all? I mean... Yeah, sure, against like Beastmen or these factions that are swarming your back line, they're probably not going to be super great. But even against Beastmen, you have a defensive build, you have Rat Ogres, you have Furnaces, you have a, just these guys as your only missile unit, and it's going to be an annoying unit. It can take out Minotaurs, it can take out Gorbals, it can snipe their Lords. Natty Bubo Sharpshooters, again, I think really deserve the number three spot. So congrats to those guys. And now we're going to be jumping over to the number two spot here on the list, which is going to be in the Realm of the Dark Elves. So these guys are just, just so good. These are the uh, Slaanesh's Harvesters, Doomfire Warlocks. So these guys just bring so much to the table. They have two bound spells. So what's cool about uh, Doomfire Warlocks, again, is they can cast some magic for free. No one's magic required. They have two charges of the Word of Pain, which is a really good ability. And Dark Elves often come down to these big Alpha Strikes. Uh, Cold One Knights slamming into enemy cab units, support of a Malekith with Soul Stealer and like who often wins those fights is going to be the determining factor of that quick battle or that game or whatever you're doing, even in campaign. And this list does have some relevance to campaign. I mean, a lot of these units are probably the best in campaign as well. But again, it's more focused on multiplayer. So anyways, uh, the Word of Pain is really, really strong. A negative 44 melee attack is a huge, huge boon. I mean, the accuracy debuff is cool, but it's not what it's often used for. So you just run Slaanesh's Harvesters with your cab units. Uh, let's say you're fighting upward, right? You're having to fight Demogriff Knights with Halberds or like some, you know, Dread Knights or something really powerful. And you have your Spear, uh, your Cold and Spear Riders. The Word of Pain, negative 44 melee attack will put most enemy cab units at zero melee attack, which basically gives them the minimum chance to hit. And that is just so powerful because you have two charges it's free no one's magic you can bring word of pain on malekith so you can double word of pain like two enemy cab units and it just gives the dark elves such a leg up in so many engagements on top of that these guys also have soul stealer it's like a lesser soul stealer if i'm not mistaken i don't know if it does quite as much it's something i'll have to test because i don't play dark elves too often but soul stealer is like one of the best abilities like in the game it's really good it heals it does damage it's just very cost effective so single-handedly these guys can win major engagements you use the word of pain use the soul stealer you come in oh and on top of that if that wasn't enough for you guys these bad boys also apply poison and have good combat stats to boot 45 weapon strength decent charge bonus very fast so they can be used as a harass unit if you don't want to use them in the main line like for example you can take a big cav engagement you can word of pain soul stealer then you can peel off with these guys get around the back end of the defensive formation get into the gun line i mean they're just fast they're useful a little bit squishy you know at 4,000 hp i think cold on spear riders have 4,300 so it's not that squishy i guess but poison amazing debuffs with the market pain and soul stealer just a really really good good unit and i think that ever since they've been released in the uh the the, the crone and the and the whatever the alariel dlc they've just been a huge game-changing unit for the dark elves so they're going to be earning the number two spot here in the list and now my friends we arrive at the glorious number one pick here on the list which is going to be the royal outsource of griffites demogriff knight regiment of renown so these guys are an absolute powerhouse of a unit and having terror on the empire is just so valuable oftentimes your backline is going to be getting swarmed by centigors by chaos knights by big scary monsters and cav units of all shapes and sizes and even hounds so having a terror causing fast powerful unit in your backline to just sweep away the trash is just so helpful and that's really where the demogriff knights shine now, on top of that, they're obviously stronger than regular demogriffs. So if we compare the stats, you can see regular demogriffs have 32, 30, 52 for their stat line. These guys have 41, 38, 52. So their stats are just better. Their leadership's better, which is always nice. 
pretty much the standard kit for most regiments right now. It's just a better stat line. But these guys, the fact that they have terror and they're stronger just make them such a good tool for keeping your backline safe or winning those big engagements. Because oftentimes with the Empire, you're going to be using cav builds. There's going to be Demogriff Knights. There's going to be Warrior Priest buffing them, Empire Knights, Reichsguard. And it comes down to these big cataclysmic engagements, you know, just these, these huge cockfights. And you really need to win those to win the game. So the Royal Outdoor Africa fights are going to be able to route away chaff, supporting spears, so many elements like that, that they just win so many engagements. And I can't tell you how many times I've like been in a late game empire battle. It's been really close down to the wire and like one or two Demogriff Knight models comes back, just like a couple from the Royal Altar of Griffites. And they're able to like tear out something off and win me the game, just an absolute ace of unit. Sweeping the back line is really helpful, of course, winning the big cav engagements, taking down big beasties and monsters. If it gets into that Lord duel and Karl Franz is in a little bit of trouble, he needs to summon the Electric Count, summon his men, the Royal Altar of Griffites will answer the call. So the number one pick here is gonna be the Royal Altar of Griffites. I highly recommend using them if you're an empire player. And yeah, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you guys disagree? Do you agree? Honestly, it was really tricky. A couple honorable mentions I'd like to throw out there. I have the uh, the Butchers of Kalkengard. I think that it was really tricky because circumstantially, any of these units could be better than other ones, depending on the matchup, the circumstances, whether it be multiplayer or campaign. So it's really tricky to make these type of lists. But nonetheless, this is just my opinion. It's very anecdotal. It's it's not not by any means like absolutely you know correct and and, and just final, you know. But I still think that uh, it's a relatively, you know, decent selection of units here. But we do, of course, have the Butchers of Kalkengard. I think Queen Bessie from time to time might, you know, make her way onto the list. But, of course, Queen Bess does have a couple matchups in which she's just not very good. But, again, Royal Turf Grip Fights are going to be our grand winners. Let me know in the comment below, guys, what type of list videos would you like to see? The next one that I kind of have in the works already is going to be the best unit for every single faction. So we did do the worst unit. And, again, my videos will be mostly focused on multiplayer. They will have some applications to campaign, like some of these regiments are still probably some of the best in campaign as well for your faction. Like Royal Turf Grip Fights, hard to say for Empire because they have those new regiments uh, with the uh, electric counts and whatnot, but nonetheless, it, it does have some relevance to campaign, but mostly multiplayer, of course. So the next one we'll be doing is going to be the best units for each faction, but if there's something you guys would like to see, if you want me to talk about spells, uh, just different characters, probably about time we revisit the Legendary Lords because my old list is like super outdated. So let me know in the comment section below. I'd really like to get some feedback on that. So thanks again for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Take care.